between spending most of last summer visiting my cousins, a cross-country movement in September, and moving into my new apartment in November, I have literally been doing my makeup out of travel makeup bags for months because most of my makeup was stored away in boxes. Well, I finally got my boxes unpacked and my makeup organized all in one place. So today I'm going to share my makeup collection, storage, organization, and we are going to switch up my everyday makeup drawer, sort of a shop my stash. If this sounds fun to you, throw this video a thumbs up and let's get into it. This is the area where I usually film most of my videos. It is also where I store and apply my makeup. I have not been using this desk as an office workspace. It is all about the makeup. I have a lot of lipsticks and I really do enjoy displaying them here. Everything from Maybelline and Milani to Lisa Eldridge Sigma BK Beauty. And then I store my taller lipsticks and my lip pencils in this pretty little pottery container. With the roll top open, you see my makeup mirror. Like I said, this is where I apply my makeup. Now the roll top doesn't close with the makeup mirror in place. So truth be told, I usually just leave the roll top open. Next to my makeup mirror are my most used makeup brushes, my Sigma Switch, my most used lipsticks, and some eye pencils. And as you will see, these drawers hold my entire makeup collection. Starting with the center drawer, which is my everyday makeup drawer. At the back, I keep the items that are pretty much in here permanently. Of course, makeup wipes, need those for swatching. I have my favorite beauty blender sponges. These are by Ruffer, surprisingly affordable. And I did talk about these in my top 10 beauty products I can't live without. I will link that video below. Some pencil sharpeners. And then here we have my one and done eyeshadows. I used to have a lot more one and done eyeshadows, but I did a major declutter before I moved and many of them were old and dried out. But I did keep my Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize. This is in the shade Oyster Pearl. I have had this for at least a couple of years and it is just as fresh and moussey as when I first purchased it. This is one of my favorite one and done eyeshadows. It just has the softest little sheen. It's a really pretty neutral taupe. Absolutely love it. You can see it's pretty much half gone. Next up, we have my Merit Solo eyeshadows. These are all cream eyeshadows. They are all matte. They are super long lasting. I have it in the shade Studio, which is sort of a rosy brown. Social, which is a really beautiful mauve and Brun, which is a deeper, cooler brown. I did go ahead and swatch all of these for you. Again, there is my Charlotte Tilbury Oyster Pearl. This is Studio. This is Social. And I wanted to show you that these can be really flexible. This is Brun, full pigment, very deep, dark brown. Here is sort of medium pigment. And there I have it really sheared out. So these are super flexible very easy, one and done, super long lasting, and I absolutely love them. Next up, we have a mini trio of the Bobbi Brown Long Wear Cream Shadow Sticks. I always like to buy minis of the cream shadow sticks because it takes forever to use them up. And when they sell them as a trio, you save a lot of money. Anyway, this came with, what is this called? This is Golden Pink. Gorgeous, gorgeous, sort of champagne, warm pink. And then we have golden bronze. Really, really beautiful bronze shade. And I like that these have a bit of shimmer without too much glitter. It's really just a nice sheen. And then we have dusty mauve. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So as of right now, these are my only one and done cream shadows. And I do use these quite a bit, so these will remain in my top drawer. But I do want to pick up some more and do sort of a one and done roundup video. So please share your favorites or whatever you would like to see me try. And in this last compartment, we have my eyeshadow primers. 
Now, I don't use an eyeshadow primer every time I do my eyeshadow. Often I just use concealer, but on the days that I do use a primer, it's one of these three. These are my only three. First up, we have Sigma Eyeshadow Base Primer. This is a crayon formula. This is in the shade Persuade. I don't know if you can even see that. It is really more of a nude skin tone. And then we have Alter Ego Eyeshadow Base. This is more of a creamy liquid with a doe foot applicator. It has a little bit of tint, but it does sheer out. And then we have the classic, iconic MAC Paint Pot. This is in the shade Painterly. It's a really nice, creamy formula. Very, very much nude skin tone. Now these all do a really nice job neutralizing the color on my lid, making the eyeshadow pop a little bit more, as well as extending the wear time of my eyeshadow. And the other thing that I keep in this drawer is my City Lips Lip Plumping Lip Gloss. You know, I use this every single day before I apply my makeup. This does a really nice job hydrating, moisturizing, and sort of fluffing up my lips a little bit. I keep one at my desk and one at my purse. This is a little bit on the pricey side, but City Lips does have frequent buy one, get one free sales, and I do have a discount code. And here we have my Lumify, which I pretty much use every morning before I put on my makeup to make the whites of my eyes sparkle. Over here we have my only three powders. You know, powders can be really challenging for my 64-year-old dry mature skin. So many of them make my look skin look older and drier. But all three of these powders are beautiful on my mature skin. I cannot be without my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. This does a beautiful job taking the shine down, but leaving a gorgeous radiant luminosity. This is so incredibly finely milled. It never looks cakey. If I'm going to set my under eyes, this is the powder that I will reach for. Now this is pricey for sure. It is definitely luxury, but I've had this for several years and it is still going strong. On the days when I do want a little bit more of a mattifying effect, for instance, when I'm filming and the lights are adding a little bit too much shine, or in the heat and humidity of the summer, I will reach for one of these. My Physician Formula Butter Glow Translucent Setting Powder, or my Kosas Cloud Set Powder. Now the Physician's Formula is a little bit more translucent, and the Kosas does have a little bit of pigment but they are both really pretty on mature skin. The only thing I don't love about the Kosas is it does tend to develop a little hard pan. I don't know if you can see the hard pan on the edge there. So sometimes I do have to take some tape and lift up the hard pan. Although it is a beautiful powder, for that reason, I probably would not repurchase it, but I do wanna get some more use out of it. But the Physicians Butter Glow is a winner all three of these live permanently in my everyday makeup drawer. And these are the blushes I've been using nonstop for the past several months. Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush has been a favorite for years. I have it in the shade Mood Exposure, also in the shade Luminous Flush. Such a beautiful radiant blush, no sparkle, no glitter, absolutely gorgeous on mature skin. I like to purchase the blushes in the mini size simply because I have quite a few blushes and it would probably take me forever to use up the full size, but I have repurchased the Hourglass Mini Mood Exposure. This has been going strong for a couple of years. Anyway, love, love, love my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blushes. And I absolutely adore my new Natasha Denona My Mini Dream Glow Blush really smooth, silky powder formula. Two shades, a deeper shade, a lighter shade, and a highlighter. But I usually just sweep my brush across all three shades for a lovely, neutral, nude, glowy blush. I have used this nonstop since I got it about a month ago. And of course, my favorite cream blush. 
is my Merit Cream Blush. This is in the shade Cheeky. Again, this is a blush I have been using nonstop for several, several months. I adore the Silky Balmy Formula. I love this shade. It is just so effortless and natural looking and glowy. Absolutely love it. Now, in the winter time, I don't typically use a lot of bronzer. So I keep this little Charlotte Tilbury Mini Bronze and Glow handy. It's a really light neutral bronze shade. It has a nice little highlighter. So again, I don't typically use a lot of bronzer in the winter, but I like to keep this one handy just in case. So that is my bronzer and blush that I have been using for the past several months. And I do need to mix this up because I have a lot of blushes. And when we get to my blush drawer, we will select some that will go in my everyday makeup drawer. My eye pencils, brows, and mascara really doesn't change much. These are products I use every single day. You have heard me talk about my L'Oreal Infallible Gel Mechanical Eye Pencil a million times. I use the shade Brown Denim pretty much every single day to tight line my upper lash line. Another pencil I use every single day is my Sephora Collection Retractable Waterproof Eye Pencil in the shade Shimmer Taupe. I use this on my lower lash line to give definition without heaviness or overpowering my eyes. My go-to brow pencil is this NYX Eyebrow Powder Pencil in the shade Taupe. It is perfect, long-lasting, absolutely love it and I have backups of all three of these pencils. My go-to brow gels to tint, volumize, fluff and hold. My NYX Thick It Stick It in the shade Taupe and my Merit 1980 Brow Gel in the shade Brown if I want just a little bit of a stronger brow. Now I have way too many mascaras open but these are some of my favorites. Maybelline Sky High Lash Sensational. Nice length and volume with no clumping. City Beauty Beyond Mascara, even more length and volume, and this conditions lashes. Now this is a little on the pricey side, but City Beauty does offer buy one, get one freeze, and of course I have a discount code. And one of my newer favorites is another Merit product. This is the Merit Mascara, and what I love about this is it gives such a natural, fluffy eyelash look. Love it. Moving on to skin tints and foundation. Now, all three of these were in my best of 2023 foundation ranking video, and these were actually my top three, and I haven't been able to stop using them in months. I have dedicated videos on all three of these, which I will link below if you would like to see them in action. Anyway, the L'Oreal Illuminance is a beautiful foundation, super easy to apply and blend. It offers hydration, light to medium coverage with a satin but not overly glowy finish. This is the foundation I typically wear when I'm filming because it does offer a really nice radiance without too much shine. Now previously I had the shade 213 but with my extra pale winter skin I recently picked up 209 which is perfect for me right now. I absolutely adore the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. I have this in the shade 5. I just apply and blend this with my fingertips. This actually feels like skincare going on. Beautifully moisturizing, sheer to light coverage, glowy finish, my skin but much, much better. The Ritual Defeat. 3-Drop Weightless Serum Foundation is a very unique and beautifully hydrating radiant formula. Just three drops gives a solid high-medium coverage. So I usually use just two drops for a light-medium coverage. Those two drops spread effortlessly across the skin and give such a beautiful radiant finish. I have this in the shade 120. One of my favorite ways to use the Veil and the Ritual Defeat is to put a little bit of the veil on the back of my hand and mix in just one scant drop of the Ritual Defeat to boost the coverage of the tint just a tad. It is a gorgeous, effortless combo. So, so natural looking. 
On to correctors and concealers. Of course, my Pixie Peach Corrector will always be top drawer. You've heard me talk about this a million times. But I am trying out a new to me corrector from Sigma. It comes in three shades and I have the lightest, which is the shade light medium. I really like that they give you two shades of peach to use alone or to custom mix. Now this formula is silkier and lighter weight, a little bit more sheer than the Pixie, more moisturizing for the under eye area, not quite pigmented or opaque enough for me to use in my dark inner corner, but like I said, still new to me, so I am experimenting with using this more on my under eye area. And I am enjoying it so far. A newer corrector that I just did a full review on in last week's video is the new release from Dermatology. This is a corrector that's really more of a hybrid product, part anti-aging eye cream, SPF 41 formulated specifically for the eye area, and a very natural color correction with light to light medium coverage. Now, this does not replace my corrector and concealer on days where I am wearing a full face of makeup, just not quite enough coverage. But this is what I've been reaching for on no makeup makeup days because it looks so incredibly natural, whereas using a concealer on no makeup makeup days can be a little bit obvious. These are the only three correctors that I currently own and they all will remain in my top drawer because they all have slightly different purposes. As far as concealers, my go-to favorite concealer for the past several years has been the Lancome Tint Adult Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. I have this in the shade 215 Buff, and I do believe this is the only concealer I have ever actually repurchased, and I have repurchased this at least twice. No matter how many other concealers I try, I always come back to the Lancome. Until Physician Formula Butter Glow Concealer. Now, I first reviewed the Physician Formula last spring, but I had the wrong shade, and I didn't get around to finding the correct shade until a couple of months ago when I picked it up in the shade Light Medium, which is perfect. Now, I do feel like the Physician Formula is a little bit more moisturizing and just a little bit more luminous than the Lancome, but I don't believe that I have used the Lancome since I picked up the Butter Glow. Now, I do love both of these, but I have a whole drawer full of concealers, so it's time to mix it up and make sure I don't get too stuck in a rut. Moving on to overall makeup storage. Now, to the left of my everyday makeup drawer is where I store my complexion products, starting with concealers. I actually did a video reviewing and ranking these six concealers several months ago. I swatched, applied, reviewed, and ranked. I will link that video in the description box below if you would like to see these in action but I haven't reached for any of these for several months. I think it's because they were stored away in a box. They just weren't convenient. So I do want to pull some of these to my everyday makeup drawer. I definitely want to pull my Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Concealer. This is the most expensive concealer I have ever purchased and I need to get some use out of it. Now it is a stick formula, which is not necessarily my favorite type of formula but it is really creamy, very blendable, and it's a perfect shade match for me. I think I have the shade Cream. Like I said, I spent so much money on this, I need to get some use out of it. Since we're playing with stick concealers, I'm also going to pull my Neutrogena Hydro Boost Stick Concealer. Now this has a more radiant finish, and it has that little core, that little moisturizing core. And there is the Neutrogena. Again, I think the Neutrogena is a little bit more radiant, a little bit more hydrating, and a little slightly less coverage. So it will be interesting to see how Drugstore compares to Luxury. Now, not that these are dupes for each other, they are different formulas, but as long as we're playing with stick concealers, I definitely want to pull both of these to my everyday makeup drawer. 
I do want to pull a concealer that I know I love and it is the Tower 28 uh, concealer. You know, I ranked this very high in that video. It is a beautiful concealer. The only reason I haven't been reaching for it, again, everything has been put away in boxes. It's a really good shade for me. I will put the shade in the description box below. So I'm definitely pulling the Tower 28. And lastly, I want to pull the Sephora Collection Bright Future Gel Serum Concealer. The Sephora Spring Sale will be coming up in the next few months. And I want to refresh my memory on this concealer for possible recommendations during the sale. So I am pulling Sephora Collection Tower 28 and my two stick concealers. And I am going to put away my beloved Physician Formula and Lancome. Moving on to the second drawer, which is where I keep my foundations and my skin tints. Now, as far as my foundation preference, I really do prefer a light medium coverage with a finish that ranges from satin skin-like finish all the way to radiant and glowy finish. Now, I did a major declutter before I moved, so I know I enjoy all of these foundations. And I have everything from the super affordable Wet n Wild, I think I paid $5 for that, to the more luxury Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk, although this is a mini. Now I do have dedicated video reviews on I think all of these foundations, so I'm not gonna go through and swatch all of these, but you can do a search on my channel and search for the review. Anyway, I do enjoy all of these foundations, but since we are in winter and I really do prefer a very moisturizing, glowy formula, I am going to pull the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue as well as the Charlotte's Beautiful Skin. These are both a richer, creamier formula, very hydrating, a beautiful glow. Neither one accentuates any dry patches, but these are very, very similar to each other. So I want to pull both of these to see which I prefer. Another foundation I really want to pull is the Sephora Best Skin Ever. I haven't used this in a long time and the Sephora sale is coming up. So I want to sort of refresh my memory on this to see if it's something I would like to recommend during the sale. From my memory, it is a medium coverage, satin skin-like finish, very affordable and even more affordable during the sale. And the last one I'm going to pull is the IT Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation. This is my favorite IT foundation. It is different from their other foundations. It is lighter weight, beautiful medium coverage, satin to radiant finish, and I think this would be perfect for my filming day. I pulled the tinted hydrators to the front of the drawer so that you can see them better. Again, these are all favorites. In fact, the Wet n Wild tinted hydrator I have repurchased multiple times. I have also repurchased the Tarte Maracuja tinted hydrator. Now both of these are more in my spring and summer colors, so I'm not going to pull these, but these are both beautiful. I do want to pull the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Skin Tint. This is a perfect color for me in the winter. I think it's Nude 40. It's a really hydrating light to medium coverage with a very soft radiant finish. So I definitely want to pull that one. And I do want to play with the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Skin Perfecting Essence a little bit more. I reviewed this in last week's video. I gave it an okay, I guess a pretty good review, but I do want to play with it a little bit more because apparently it can be used as a primer under makeup. And one of you even said you, could, you were applying it over your foundation. So I do wanna play with this a little bit more and get to know it better. Moving on to my color complexion products where I have my bronzers and my blushes. I have two cream bronzers, two powder bronzers, a variety of cream and liquid blushes, and of course, some powder brushes. Now, like I said earlier, I really don't use bronzer that much in the wintertime and I only have a few. So if I want a bronzer, I can easily choose from this drawer rather than pulling to my everyday makeup drawer. These are all excellent. The Tower 28 is a beautiful cream bronzer formula, very creamy. 
and the Merit Bronze Balm is one of my absolute favorites. Let me just quickly swatch these for you. Tower 28 in the shade Broad and Merit Bronze Balm in the shade Clay. I hope you can see neither one of these pull orange on me and the Bronze Balm is definitely a more sheer balmy formula. And then again, I have two powder bronze formulas, L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear. I have it in the lightest shade. I think it's the shade Fair and the Sigma Powder Bronzer. Now, both of these formulas are matte and they're both in the lightest shade in the range. And they're both absolutely gorgeous. Neither one of them pulls orange on my skin. And there they are. I do think the L'Oreal is just a tad lighter than the Sigma but they're both beautiful bronzers. Moving on to my cream and liquid blushes. Now, you know I love a cream blush, especially my Merit Beauty Blush Balm. You can see I have several shades of the Merit Beauty, but I also have some other really nice cream blushes to choose from. This one is by Rare Beauty, and this is the shade Nearly Nude, and this is a really silky, almost balmy formula. You can see it's a really pretty sort of cool nude shade. Then we have one by Keir Weiss. This is a cream blush. This is gorgeous. I used the heck out of this in the summer months. Just a really pretty summer color. I think you can see it is a thicker formula, less balmy, a little bit more opaque. And then we have another gorgeous cream blush from Tower Beauty. Again, this is a really silky, almost balmy formula. This is in the shade Beach Please. I think you can see Beach Please is more of a warm nude, whereas Rare Beauty is more of a cool nude. And then we have, I think this Milani Cheek Kiss was one of the very first cream blushes I purchased several years ago. It's a classic. This is in the shade Nude Kiss. And again, you can see it's a little bit brighter, but it's still more of a dusty mauve shade. Now I have used the heck out of all of these, so I'm not going to pull any of these to my everyday makeup drawer. What I am going to pull is this Westman Atelier Cream Blush. I purchased this many, many months ago in a mini, and then I completely forgot about it. This is in the shade Petal. Look at that gorgeous shade, super blendable sort of a satin formula. Everybody raves about this, so I am super excited to play with this Westman Atelier. I am also going to pull one of my Merit Beauty Blush Balms. This is their brand new shade in the shade Rouge. Now, I'm a little intimidated by that bright shade, but again, Merit Blush Balms are so sheer and so blendable. I think it's really pretty, and I'm very, very excited to play with this one. Now, for reference, I just want to show you the cheeky that I've been using for so long compared to the brand new Rouge. Can you see how flattened out the cheeky is? Anyway, I just want to show you for comparison because I have used the hack out of cheeky, but it is time to put cheeky away and give Rouge a chance. I have to admit, I tend to avoid my liquid blushes. They're just a little tricky to work with. But last week, I did a full review of the new e.l.f. Camo Liquid Blush. Now, I'm not super crazy about either one of the shades that I purchased. So instead, I'm going to pull in the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush in the shade Encourage. This is a really beautiful shade. And there is the shade Encourage. I love the shade. But like I said, I do find these types of super high pigment liquid formulas a little tricky to use. So let's see if I can perfect my technique with a little practice. As far as powder blushes, now I did rearrange these a little bit so that you can see them better. Quite a bit of drugstore. We have Essence, Milani, L'Oreal. Now I have showed these on my channel at one time or another, so I'm not going to go ahead and swatch. But the powder blush that I am going to pull is a blush I completely forgot about. And it is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Unlocked Palette that I picked up over the holidays. And like I said, I completely forgot about it. You know how much I love Hourglass, so I'm super excited to pull this. Two blushes, a highlighter, a bronzer. 
very gorgeous. Can't wait to play with this. However, between the cream blushes and this glowy formula, I really do want to pull a matte blush. So I am going to pull Essence the Blush. This is incredibly affordable. This is only about $3. It is a incredibly silky matte formula. This is in the shade Befitting, which is a perfect nude. So I think this matte blush is going to perfectly complement the cream blushes and the glowy blushes that I chose for my everyday makeup drawer. Finishing up with my new everyday makeup drawer, basically I just rotated through my blushes, foundations and skin tints, and concealers. I realize I completely forgot highlighters, but this video is long enough as it is. I really don't need to pull lipsticks and eyeshadow palettes because I love playing with all of those. And I did just post my top 10 neutral eyeshadow palettes, which I will link below. You know, the idea of rotating through the everyday makeup drawer is not to say I can't pull other products if I want to use them, but rather to keep some products front and center to encourage and remind me to rotate through my makeup and not get too stuck in a rut. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging in there with me today. I hope you have a great day, a wonderful week, and I hope to see you in my next video.